Hello everyone, this is Haku Dabin and I'm here to read id SCP-77 and SCP-78. And the census will be coming out on the 31st, I think. I will be wishing you all a happy new years. Starting off, we have SCP-77, also known as the Rot Skull. Item number, SCP-77, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-77 is to be kept in Research Sector 861 on top of a half-meter steel pedestal in a 3 by 3 by 3 meter chamber with half-meter thick steel reinforced walls. The reinforced steel hatch door to the chamber is to comply with AH-37 protocol and is regarded at all times by two level 1 personnel. A boom mic connected to a speech recognition system should verify that all pronunciation is within standards. A camera is mounted with the, within the chamber to record any changes. Every eight hours, a member of two, but preferably three, trained D-class personnel are to enter the containment area and in a loud, clear voice, read the runes etched into SCP-77 in unison. The reading must be performed by individuals who understand the full meaning of the runes being read, who are able to pronounce the entirety of the inscription correctly, and who are no more than 30 centimeters away from SCP-77. All personnel must undergo a a week a one week training session with foundation linguists for pronunciation and reading and dialect coaching. A minimum of twenty class C personnel are to be trained or undergoing are to be trained or undergoing training at all times. Trained D class personnel are exempt from termination until such time as they have been replaced. Foundation linguists are to remain on call in case of unexpected rune change. Every new set of rune runes is to be transcribed into phonetic English and provide, either with literal and etymotic translations as quickly as possible. See document N77 and unknown through unknown for archive translations. The cafeteria menu for research sector or 86 one must not include any potatoes or potato-based ingredients. Description SCP-77 appears to be the top half of a Cuban and skull engraved with runes, each filled as each filled with an unidentified black resin. The runes change every lunar month to find by the full moon rising above the horizon in Ireland as well as at the center at the winter and summer solstice is the spring and autumn equinoxes and whenever a partial annual or total solar or lunar eclipse is visible from ireland if these engravings are not read out loud at least once within a 24 hour period the eye sockets and nasal cavity of scp-77 will emit scp-77-1 scp-77-1 is a luminescent green vapor whose precise nature remains undetermined. It is to be noted that although SCP-77 and one behaves as a normal gas in all other ways, it only occupies is the spaces which are within SCP-77's effective line of sight and does not flow into the space behind SCP-77 unless confined. OPAC and well, barriers from the biological contact can provide temporary protection from SV-771. However, attempts to permanently contain SV-771 within OPAC containers have failed due to the artifact's production of sufficient quantities of SV-771 to explosively rupture these containers. <sighs> All biological material with the Obvious exception of SCP-77 itself, which comes into contact with SCP-77-1, is instantly transformed into a viscous, malodorous ooze. 
the ooze has been identified as a rotted flesh of potato tubers, which have severely infected, which have been severely infected with the potato blight. One cubic centimeter of SCP-871 transforms upwards of 800 grams of biological material. Reading SCP-77 and engravings has noticeable if transient effect. X on the health of the readers. These effects include nausea, cramps, headaches, dizziness, incontinence, fever, skin rashes, nosebleeds, and ugu states. Effects intensify as the time in between readings is increases and become cumulative for individuals who read engravings too many consecutive or, or too frequently. Readers have a 60% chance of developing an allergy to potatoes. Addendum 77-1 The artifact was recovered from an unknown place in the village of Redacted Ireland. Locals had built a shrine around the artifact, where upwards of Redacted participants would engage in a nightly ritual. Fragmentary historical documents retrieved from the remnants of the village. See Archive 77-1576 and Library C. Archive 77-1582, indicate that the artifact existed as early as 1848, at which point in time it's, it is described in highly positive terms, including Protector and Redacted. By 1869, however, references to the artifact are fearful, resentful, and couched in euphemism. Now we go on to SV-78, also known as Guilt. Item number, SCP-78, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-78 is be left hanging on the wall of its containment cell and physically unplugged. The sole outlet in the room should be controlled by a switch, which must be left in the off position at all times unless SCP-78 is undergoing testing. Personnel who enter the container and room should familiar themselves so familiar with the position of the switch so that uh, they can locate with their eyes closed in the event that SCP-78 is accidentally turned on. Description: SCP-78 is a pink ink neon sign, approximately one and a half meters long. That displays the phrase, too late to die young. It was initially recovered in a town of uh, unknown after Sanford that foundation data mining protocols recorded an abnormally high death rate due to starvation or other forms of self-neglect. While powered off, SCP-78 has no abnormal properties and may be observed without effect. Being SCP-78 is for less than 10 seconds while it is powered on has no effect nor does indirect observation. Subjects who could not understand SCP-78 due to a lack of ability to comprehend written language are also unaffected. However, any subject that views SCP-78 for longer than 10 seconds while when viewing any handwriting piece of written piece of writing occasionally perceive extra sentences. These sentences are not written in the subject's own style or, or in that of the surrounding text, but consists of a random style that the differs from note to note. See addendum F78-1. And always is our phrase as if to as to gauge the subject's guilt on some matter or decision they feel guilty about. For example, a D-class personnel who is convicted of murdering his wife and a heated argument read the sentence, she deserved it for not doing what you said in his handwritten journal. While Dr. Blank, who left his found need to work for the foundation, was actually exposed, found the sentence, Your work will save humanity, and it is notes on SCP Unknown. At first, the effect is beneficial, with affected subjects report greater peace of mind after exposure to SCP-78. However, 
The senses shift from emphasizing the positive consequences of actions to de-emphasizing the negative ones. And on a time scale of one week, Dr. Blank, two days later, found the sentence, They never loved you anyway. In his personal a journal, Moreover, the writing will start giving justifications for acts the subject has never felt guilt over, or which the subject has already rationalized. The subject will then start reconsidering his justification for those actions, as well as attempting to justify any further actions that they take. The need for rational, rationalization and increases as time goes on, and they will start vocalizing their thought processes. And by the end of one week, any task the subject performs more trivial than in the basics of survival will include a bout of neurosis as the subject attempts to rationalize. That's why they did not instead take some other action. By the end of two weeks, the subject is unable to eat food. After the first bite, they will spend the next hour just finding that why they ate that specific part of the meal first. That due to malnutrition follows unless the subject is feed intravenously. The class personnel who have reached the state as well as Blank researchers who are accidentally exposed are kept alive for purposes of study and see if a, cur a cure can be found. The sole exception to SCP 78's effect is SCP 78 itself. A subject who feels SCP 78 a second time will see it displaying increasingly more guilt inducing messages as duration and sense of first exposure increases. All subjects who have viewed that at a week after initial exposure have attempted at suicide. Addendum 78-1, D-19-384, whose handwriting was an unusual mix of cursed print, was exposed to SCP-78 and was then terminated after reaching the consequence-free stage. Subsequently, other subjects have reported seeing Senses and some cursive uh, print mix. It is possible that those who die after being exposed to SCP-78 are incorporated into it in some way. Whew. No doubt, was SCP-77 and SCP-78. I hope you enjoy this video and have a very happy new year's obviously i'll be here for it i might be recording ahead of time i might be recording on the day of you'll have to see won't you i'll see you when i, I get to recording these again